Sports is brought to you by Gulfstream Park. Hold the mayo. It's time for Mike Mayo's Lunchbox. Find out what's being served with Mike, Beefo, and Luby, the only show that covers food, sports, and the proper maintenance of your car. And now, a man who had the distinction of having an entire health clinic named in his honor, Mike Mayo. I want the flim flam sauce with the awesome bay with Shafafa on the side. Good afternoon and welcome to another Friday edition at Gulfstream Park, 10 Palms, The Lunchbox, Mike Mayo, Jeff DeForest, Tony Segreto, and of course Mike Luby Lubitz. How, how about Tony with the freebie stuff, though? Come on, man. We got to come on this right away. Look, look at this. Look at this <laughs> beautiful Miami shirt. That New, that New York hat looks like he paid about two dollars on Canal Street. Though. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's an official Yankee hat. Oh, yeah, it's wow. an official it's Yankee hat? hat. Wow. Well, look, look, whoever told you that also tried to sell you a bridge that you were <laughs> walking across. <laughs> Miami host committee. How about this thing? Uh, man, we, we don't have anything to say. That's nice. some yeah. legit uh, With merch. With the Nike or, logo, or, get out of here. What do they call that? Swag. 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 That is some proper. That came in a gift bag gear. that had all kinds of stuff. Um, Sikorsky <laughs> diamonds, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, a little bit of a soggy day here, but that's a not gonna, bit. that's not going to dampen Miami. our spirits. It's the second day of the tournament. Thursday was a wild one. We're going to incorporate the tournament into the it lunchbox was, contest this week. It was well, so it's, good to see Kentucky lose. Uh, <laughs> uh, are you a Kentucky hater? <laughs> no, but Calipari is a piece of work. So here's the th- here's the thing. My wife went to Oakland University. No, no. Really? yeah. Oh yeah, oh, Auburn Hills, uh, Michigan. That's so yeah. funny. Oh my god. Yesterday, ninety-five percent of the people in the country would have thought Oakland is from California, California, California. Bay Area. Yeah. But we learned yesterday that it's actually a, a suburban Detroit. It's Auburn suburban Hills, Detroit. Yeah. Yep. Is there Oakland Hills and Auburn Hills, or is it just Oakland, Michigan, or what's the Oakland. deal? It's listed as uh, like Auburn Hills, but also so, as some other city that starts yeah. with an R or something. I don't know. What Rochester. Might be. Yeah. 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 Rochester. All right. Um, I, so- I saw them though. This 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 is screwy because uh, I saw them in their conference tournament uh, in the finale, and I thought, oh, wow, they're pretty impressive, you know. And, and the story with the coach is great. Forty years at the same school. Y- yeah, forty they years. They never won an NCAA tournament game in the actual tournament before. Do never. they have a hundred year old nun cheering them on? Also, uh, yeah. they, they they have like the great story is this guy uh, Townsend is, is a real good player, and his father is a photographer, and they always show the father. And there's a connection there. I think he might have even played the father at Oakland University for the same coach. He's been there 40 years. Jeez. And uh, I, 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 it was terrible. I, I was about to mention on uh, the show with Luby, hey, I kind of like this Oakland team a little bit. Yeah. And I saw they were playing Kentucky, and I chickened out. Yeah. And sure enough, they, they bleep and win the thing, and I would have looked like a genius. But uh, instead, I, I cut my mouth shut. Come the on. bets you don't make. The bets you don't make. Uh, unbelievable. I, I always, you know, not. I don't really bet on the tournament. I don't really bet on sports. But um, I think one of the fun things of the tournament is try to just pick a Cinderella story and go with it. And uh, if you have an angle there, Tony Segreta, like your wife's alma mater, yeah. I would have think that would have been oh, a perfect God. opportunity to go both heavy on you know, the, the yeah. point spread and a little bit on the money line, and you would be rolling in dough right now. I'd be rolling in dough, but I didn't do it, so not well, cool, though. So be it. Well, let me ask you this, because I'm going to get right into the contest then, because I had several options for the tiebreaker, and let, let's just do it. Uh, we'll get it out of the way quick this week. Uh, it's going to be a, a our usual Sunday brunch giveaway. Uh, and uh, we've again, got, we have the date for our brunch bash. Brunch bash is April, Sunday, April 21st, 21st. So about, about a month from now. Discounted rate of forty four dollars. I think it may be off. Tony's first brunch bash. If yeah, Tony will join us. It's a really good time. And so it's that, that be, should be featured though. That Tony Segreto is going to be. That's there. why oh, yeah. I'm mentioning it now. Maybe we'll have him get into his thing. Give the opening remarks instead of me. <laughs> Maybe some show slouch. Him no, no, you're very good at this. You're very good at this. Well, I'll give the opening remarks, yeah. but my handicapping is ice cold. So maybe I'll have Tony give yes. out a couple of winners, or maybe Tony throw out a couple of three to five. Maybe we'll have Otani in after he's already been banned from baseball, and he could give some of his soccer and. Uh, Sayonara show him. Exactly. <laughs> Sayonara. Oh, man. So, uh, again, if you want to come to the Brunch Bash, $44 per person and, and then plus tax and tip. And, of course, uh, just email the number of people in your party to Mike Mayo Eats at gmail.com. It's the same address that you're going to send the contest entries to. Mike Mayo Eats 
at gmail.com. It's a very logical email address because mm-hmm. that's all I do is eat. Uh, and uh, just get me the number of people in your party that want to come out on April 21st. Obviously, contest winners are welcome to redeem their prizes that day as well. Last time, I think we had a group of almost like 50 people. Yes, it was crazy. Really. And uh, including uh, a whole bunch, like uh, 30 paying customers, which yep. uh, is why we're still here at Gulfstream. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd encourage everybody. I thought you had a following, man. Uh, uh, yeah, what well, no, that time it? we actually did. Yeah, he does. It was good. Oh, no. And Joe Beja was very pleased. Joe Beja today, talk about well timed moves. Yeah. He's not here this week. How did you not he's, snore your way on this trip? He's swimming in tequila right now at this like villa oh, that the, the Patron uh, tequila people nice. have, the, yeah. their tequila farms. I don't even know how you make tequila, but. Uh, did, did you make in your capacity as a food critic many alcohol related? trips or tours or anything like go to Napa or anything? For IRS purposes, uh, absolutely. I was always exploring (laughs) the new wines. I mean, you can't be treated any better than if you're being the guest, uh, if you are the guest of some alcoholic beverage. Oh, yeah. uh, No, I never took freebies when I was a actual, you know, ethical journalist. When did that start? When you became an electronic media again, newspapers (laughs) were different than, uh, yeah, the the, the electronic phase. We took everything. Tony and I took everything. What are you talking about? Tony had Tony had had integrity. Let he me did, tell but you. he is wearing like twelve. Yeah, different I mean, come on. He, that was he, after he, he wouldn't have a wardrobe. Was after, it wasn't for freebies. That was, that, was, <laughs> that was after he was off air. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> so let's get back to Joe is bathing in Patron tequila because Good actually man. he's in the midst of again. It, this is a business trip um, that picking uh, a barrel. Right, he is picking a barrel and they're gonna like stamp a barrel that's exclusively gonna be aging and then eventually served here at Ten Palms at Goldstream. It's a very exciting thing. And uh, man, the man knows how to work it because research and development. This is work. This is a work gigs. trip. So uh, yeah. we might have his very able assistant. Well, Tommy. Mexico, no, we never had Tommy we on. It'd be cool to have Tommy. Tommy might come on later today. I invited Ron Nicoletti to make an nice. appearance to preview next week's Florida Derby. I can't believe we're already yeah, crazy. The end of the Premier Championship oh, meet yeah. is nigh. It's going to be next Saturday. Is the Florida Derby day where you're going to have like ten stakes races and you a have a pick fifteen yet? races. They'll start at seven a.m. and end about 8 p.m. or you know it's going to be a long day uh hopefully the weather will be beautiful next saturday let's get all the bad weather out of the way this week but uh um what was the question defo i'm sorry i was just do you have a pick yet for the florida derby yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. not although oh, no. there are there's going to be a big three <laughs> the big race this week is the louisiana derby and that yeah. talk about a wide open race 12 horse field pletcher's got three in there they're all kind of long shots next week here he's got the big horse fierceness is uh, I guess the Breeders' Cup is juvenile still the, champ, the big horse. Yeah, he just uh, did a workout this morning, and then uh, the other two horses in it, Hades, uh, is coming off a win, I think, in the family. Joe Arsino, our man, and Joey Esposito. Yeah, and then uh, the third horse, Chuck McGahey, has a pretty good horse. Oh, yeah. Chuck his name great. escapes me now, but uh, it, Conquest something, Conquest Warrior, I believe it is, getting a lot of buzz on the backside. So Jeez, it's going to be a nice three horse. Uh, marquee matchup with a couple of other contenders thrown in but that's next a week from tomorrow uh meanwhile tomorrow here i've kind of had a screw up the, well kind of um the contest i was going to do a the feature race was scheduled to be on the turf the texas glitter it was going to be an eight horse field but with it's going to be off the turf tomorrow because we've gotten just pounded yeah, with the rain looks yeah, like no so shot, yeah. um so okay so here we go let's go over the contest again send your answers it's going to be the restaurant a horse pick and then the tiebreaker pick, send them to Mike Mayo Eats at gmail.com by noon tomorrow. The contest race, I've made it the 10th race on the card, numbers 1 through 11, which is going to be conducted on the all-weather Tapita track. So that race should be still have a full field of 11. Uh, again, send the numbers 1 through 11 for the 10th race on tomorrow's card at Gulfstream. Post time scheduled for 5.38 p.m., and it's a bunch of older horses, an allowance optional claiming race going five and a half furlongs on the all weather track. All right. Then uh, I was I kind of had a toss up as to first of all, I was going to say, oh, should we make it the Louisiana Derby 12 horse field? But I don't want anybody betting on any races other than Gulfstream Park because they're so good to us right. here. Right. So we're picking that. So, I, you know, I was going to say I chose an NCAA uh, second round game tomorrow. Guess which one I chose of these following two. It would be either the Oakland versus North Carolina State. That's a good game to uh, try and judge. Or I would say the marquee matchup tomorrow in terms of the biggest names, Kansas versus Gonzaga. 
Which one should I or did I pick? I, I'd go Oakland. Uh, I'd go Oakland, State. Oakland. Oakland. You Martin guys State. all think the way I do because open. Oakland looks like Cinderella. Yeah. And let's say people say, nah, it was a one-hit wonder. Then, then put that down as you're, you think they're going to get shellac. Put NC State by uh, 32. If you think Oakland is a Cinderella story, put Oakland by four. That's the beauty of this tiebreaker. So we are going to make the tiebreaker tomorrow night. I believe it starts at 7 o'clock. Oakland of Michigan, not California, versus North Carolina State, who I believe won the ACC championship uh, in terms of the uh, the tournament. The only way they got out in. Of yeah. yeah out uh, of by the way, halftime score, right? FAU 20, Northwestern 19. Okay. I can't believe that's Pat a Riley, halftime score. Pat Riley and his Knicks. Oh, my God. Would yeah. love this freaking score. Are they going to hit 40 in this game? That's what if it was a final was like 39? <laughs> the 27. 28. <laughs> the hell is that? Dusty May meets Buddy Ryan. Some defense there, right? That's something going on. Is it really on. halftime? I mean, they got the halftime show on. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. Oh so I think the under is looking good in that game. Uh, Two points a minute. Tony. Yeah. What is that? Uh, sorry to go heavy on the sports, but this is just crazy times. I mean, come on. Tournament days. We've got all kinds of big horse racing leading up to, you know, Florida Derby. And I love that the they still have a crowd round. here, even though it's like freaking daily. Well, well, you, yeah. know, you know degenerates. You cannot. <laughs> <laughs> We're like cockroaches. <laughs> but they created the a Order going to be rising. Nothing's going to stop, yeah, gonna stop me. Gonna stop me anyone. Look at some people feel they have an edge. And we will be just, I'm going to build an arc if I have to. Exactly. Yeah. I'm actually going to play a little poker tonight. Meanwhile, I had a great time last night at the oh, uh, trivia, trivia yeah. no challenge. Oh, I was Land yeah. Lovers. You and I saw, won. Ken was a little grumpy yesterday, the professor. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but that was before and he saw Gonzaga. Yeah, it was before Gonzaga saved his McNeese. day. Yeah. Yeah. And and Luby was in fine form. But I I had a two person team. You and, and the name of our team was Law and Disorder because my companion's last name is Law. All right. And I'm the Disorder. In the they almost draft. won. They were third place. We got. We, well, I got. Okay. Let me give, give him the and question. This is a question that he should have known because I, I feel sh- like he was alive during I this. I didn't know the musical clue. The musical clues really tip you off as to the right Only answer. one player uh, won yep. three MVP. outstanding players of the Final, Final Four. four. Okay. Men, men's final four. Men's Only one NCAA player. One player won a three Name who has been in who was basically that was in the final four. Yeah, three you were in the times. final four yeah. every like that many times. And again, there can only be one school that actually was in the final four. He was one. close. He All got the other guy. Cinder. Thank you. Yeah, I said he Bill said Walton. Walton, but Walton didn't do it three times. I don't think. Yeah, uh, uh, it's possible. Uh, did they they bomb out the do last I have to go to the record book and, and claim foul that I might have actually? No, Kareem was correct. It's the right answer, but. Uh, Walton you, was a good guess. You might have had an incorrect answer because, uh, according to you guys this morning, you're saying the playing game shouldn't count as an official NCAA tournament game. One of your yeah, questions was, seven games, what's yeah. the maximum number of t- uh, wins a team can have in an NCAA tournament? And you said the final answer it's was seven. seven. Yeah, seven now, games. if you're saying that playing game doesn't count, then it should be six. And yeah. I demand a recount. Maybe I did win. <laughs> He didn't win. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. He demands a recount. He can recount. Can, you know what? Give him a gift certificate. Yeah, Twenty five dollars to land lovers. It's a witch hunt. It's, it's all to knock it off. <laughs> the deep state was in on it. And uh, sorry about the Gamecocks, Professor. The deep state was in on it. Uh, no, but uh, with Oakland, I mean, the reason that I, I think it doesn't count is because uh, they were saying that Oakland never won a tournament game. Oh. But they did win a playing game right. like like twenty years ago or something. And so uh, they would have one tournament win if yes. they counted the play-in game. I think they won a play-in game in the first year. Of yeah, the play-in it's been around game. like five, what is it, six, yeah. seven years, something like that? No, it's been around a while. Uh, More than a decade? Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. But that was their only win prior to that in the, in who the is NCAA Oakland? tournament. They play who? They play NCAA. It's a State. winnable State game. Tomorrow. Cinderella. So that is going to be a winnable game. Last week, I neglected to mention what the actual third tiebreaker was. Here you go. You have it this week. The third tiebreaker is... The winning team and winning margin in tomorrow night's NCAA game between uh, nor, um, uh, North Carolina State yeah. and, and Oakland. Oakland. Is it Oakland University, Oakland Community College? What, what no, are they? they? Can't be Oakland College. Park Boulevard. That's Oakland. What, <laughs> 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 what, the fuck? what What is their team Oakland name? Nickname? Oakland University. The Grizzlies, I think. The Grizzlies? There, there's something Grizzlies. It's there's the Grizzlies a, there's versus another the word uh, before Grizzlies. It's like uh, you know some weird thing like the yeah. Mountain Grizzlies or... Don't Whatever. Ever, but, what? Who's their most famous player ever before the, this tournament? I I Oakland? don't even know. Don't I even know. Tell you. Okay. Don't know. Yeah, I couldn't tell this you. This guy Cerrito, was shooting five three, decades so. in the business, sports I, maven. I don't know. Doesn't even know his wife's alma mater's best player yeah. before. This I said to my wife, "You you're winning. You're, you're beating Kentucky." Yeah. 
<laughs> but that's what it is. Walton won two she Final care. Four MOPs. Mm. Kareem won three. I was so close. Yeah. So close. But Remember, you knew it had to be you. Look at this deuce yeah. coming from All the right. sky All here. Right, One to two. One to How much two. money does this guy have on this horse? It's up. All right. <laughs> we got the running. He, he has a one to two shot. Saved. I hope he owned the horse. <laughs> right. He right. works with Otani. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's out there on the chat line, but we're having yeah, a good time here at Gulf Stream despite the weather. We've got fish tacos. We've got the Again, this is the last Friday of Lent, although I guess next Friday counts also. It's good Friday. Good Friday, yeah. Swordfish, calamari. Fish tacos for those in who are serving of, uh, the, the Lenten on Tony season. We got lots Tony's of fish. Tony's got his ahi tuna uh, on top of the caprese salad. Defoe's got his the 10, 10 palm, palm salad. Classic, yeah. We've got uh, me and Luby can't resist the allure of the it's nice pasta. It's the uh, what do they call it? The, the it's vodka rigatoni sauce. alla vodka. Rig, rigatoni alla vodka with the blackened chicken, and the blackened chicken is grilled to perfection. Yes. It is moist. Yes, it is juicy. It is something and they cook the pasta perfect. It's nice and it's, al dente. And I, I'm trying to go a little bit lighter on the carbs, but of course it gets you placed right, right in. in front of me. <laughs> I did get a little walk of life in this morning before the rains came, so a little bit of guilt-free pasta carbs. There you go. Never killed anybody. All right, so we're we getting your yeah. hints. We get okay, the, here we, we go. Get, we get the contest. Man, I, I try to get right to it, and here we are, 16 minutes in. Yeah. If multiple entrants have all three elements correct, there will be a tiebreaker drawing on Monday's Lunchbox, which is going to be a home show. Nice. And again, the prize wins some. Sunday brunch for two at 10 Palms at Gulfstream. That includes a beautiful all-day buffet, one mimosa each, tax and tip, full rules at my Mike Mayo's Lunchbox uh, Facebook page. All right, for this week's contest, we celebrate the upcoming International Whiskey Day, yeah, which week. is what day, uh, Luby? It's you know? the 27th. Is that That's Wednesday? right. Next Wednesday, we're going to have that great barbecue dinner, whiskey dinner, in conjunction with Visit Lauderdale on House on the River. It's all sold out, so we did our job. We're celebrating International Whiskey Day with a restaurant where you can find some really nice premium pours of some very select brown liquors. All right, here's the clues. I expect none of you gentlemen to get this one. This Western Delray Beach restaurant opened in June 2021, so it's less than three years old, and quickly became a hot spot thanks to its dark wood panel dining room, red meat-centric menu, Two bars and a whiskey wall featuring over 1,000 bourbons, rise wow, whiskeys 1, from around the globe. 1,000. This me. place is, when you go in there, you know how, like, sometimes, like, when you go into Vegas and you see yeah. the sports book and your mouth just falls open and drool starts coming out? Like my Diana my going mouth to fell open and it's drooling right now. That's me when I walked into this place for oh, the yeah? first time oh, because that whiskey wall, it's backlit, you know, beautiful golden amber hues. Oh. Nice. And and just every bottle, all the Pappy Van Winkles, all the oh, really? the the, the Weller. What's the shot of Pappy Van Winkle cost? Uh, there? They have all kinds <clears throat> of. And the thing Please is, they hundreds. have these tastings because, and this will get to clue number two, because the guy who runs the beverage program there is a real um, local legend. But so, okay, this place is not run by anyone named Zevon Buffett Beatty. Cromarty or Harding, there you go. <laughs> but you will find John Fitzy Fitzpatrick, a local libation legend whose official title here is spiritual advisor. Get it? Oh, that's spiritual, spiritual advisor. He's name. not a mixologist. He's not the head bartender. He's not in charge of beverage. He is the spiritual advisor. I love that. And he conducts top flight whiskey tastings at a private bar area along the back. Nice. It's really a nice experience too if you're into the premium liquors. Love it. Um, I would highly recommend making a reservation for one of Fitzy's high end tastings and serve with little light bites and food. Really good experience. Do you have any idea? What, well, based I on mean, the I, names, I have one of the names. I mean, yeah, go. Right. But, but I don't know. I mean, okay. if that's okay. the official name, I'll what, give it to what you. What race was it again? Yeah. Uh, the race? Yeah. The, the, tenth they have race. To, tenth race. Okay. Tenth race tomorrow's card 11 horses, one through 11. And Allowance optional claim. Tight, All right. Tight. And again, the place is not run by anyone named Zevon Buffett, BD, Cromarty. Okay. And the type. Wait, what was Cromarty's uh, tagline? It's like. Oh, talking hardball with talk, the crow. Talking yeah. hardball with the homie. Yeah. Call, me homie. Call, call me homie. Call me homie. Call me homie. Now, that's some AM radio history here yeah. for people here. It was a great Cromarty. show. Man. It was Don't one of my favorite first shows. Name, but when Cromarty did the show. Well, I, I love the Crow, and um, he, he was a wild man. Talking hardball here. Yeah. Talking hardball with the Crow, but then somebody would just call to bust him, and then he would call in, you know, as a crank call and go, hey, hey, uh, uh, Crow, can, can you explain the infield fly roll to me? <laughs> you can tell that even though he played later. baseball for like 100 years, he was in Japan, he was a big star, he was in America, he did very well with the Expos. Uh, you know, he's a legitimate uh, major league hitter. 
Uh, but he had no idea what the rules were. Well, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I know. he would try to explain, well, that's when he hit a pop-up, and the guys are running, and they might be <laughs> running, but they might not be running, and then you can get them, but call me, homie. Let me let me ask you this. If show. we ask Randy Red Deer Moeller to uh, explain offsides, do you think he oh, could? Oh, yeah, no, Moeller could do that, yeah. Yeah, he's actually a capable. Sorry player. to interrupt, but we yeah. have the celebrities of all celebrities, a man that I feel like is as responsible for us being here as anyone. Joe Beja chimes in okay. from Mexico again while he's working hard. This is research and he's development that he's doing in right tequila now. right now. He's, he's like, sorry. He, he's quote unquote. This is like Shohei Tani yeah. interpreter being the one gambling. <laughs> he's sorry he couldn't be here today. I love you, Joe. You're not sorry you couldn't be here. Actually, and you shouldn't be. Joe Beja. Pick the perfect day not to be here because it is monsoon weather in it's South It's clearing Florida. up. What are you talking about? Flood warnings. <laughs> Look at the sun's coming out Flood there. Watches there. are in effect. <laughs> no sun My anywhere. best bet of the day. <laughs> Is uh, you won't be seeing any turf racing today or tomorrow. No, That's I the, the place is packed, though, Joe. Bear so, uh, of bad news, man. Your guys, oh, no, and it's going to be nice. Doing great job. Uh, even the, the, well, all right, we have Joe. We miss you. We'll see you next week. And of course, uh, a lot of great weekend. things happening here uh, tomorrow morning. Um, say, say hello to Jose Cuervo for me, Joe. Yeah, exactly. I, I know he's down in the dumps now on the uh, no, ladder. No, he's at Patron. Tequilas. Mr. Yeah. Patron. You're such a yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Patron. Such a, uh, uh, but uh, Cuervo might be on the scene. You never know. This man, it's Joe Beja, class all the way. Patron. He's at Villa Patron. I don't even know what they call it. I saw a picture he posted on Facebook. The place looks like a palace where the Aztecs might have yeah. had <laughs> several yeah. emperors. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm sure, and again, he's picking out that barrel. They're going to stamp it, and they're going to serve it. I'm here. sure he's, he's going to do it here. A, a lot of research. Tomorrow morning, they've got their Gulfstream you know, breakfast. I don't know if the weather, you know, I don't know yeah, if it's rain or shine, weather permitting it. But again, usually just assemble 7, 7.30 in the breezeway. They have the Buffet breakfast. So somebody was asking about it on the Let's Eat group this morning. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, this Joe is the can last chime one. in. Yeah. Are they doing one of those uh, backstretch breakfasts next Saturday on Derby Day, or is tomorrow the last one? I think one? you said this was the last this one. This is the last yeah. one. Uh, okay. I'm not quite sure. He hasn't responded yet. I'll, okay. If he does respond, and, I'll, uh, I'll make sure to let you If know. it is the last one, then uh, come on out. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. Um, and, of course, next weekend, Florida Derby Day, another one of the tastes of the track on the third floor Flamingo Room, but this one is going to be it's elevated. Like Super high level. A little bit higher level <laughs> in terms of the wines. And I'm, I guess I'm getting um, – I'm 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 gonna be there because Val, one of Valerie's friends, is celebrating a birthday, and she wanted to do it at the Taste of the Track. They already purchased a whole here. bunch of tickets. Oh, yeah, wow. tickets. Oh, good for uh, them. Hopefully, there <laughs> are still tickets available. And then I don't know if I have to buy my own ticket or maybe. Are you I buying can... one of those? I, know, I, gonna... I was scared to bring it up to Joe, but I'm well, definitely getting it. Well, you know, because usually on the big race days, I know it gets really crazy. Heck, crowded. Yeah. I, even my snoring has its limits. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can be considered the official ambassador, exactly. you know, uh, ambassador of the day. But uh, all I know is that Val and a bunch of her gal pals are going to be coming out, uh, and you want to do it too. It's going to be great. Yeah, these are great so wines, fun. They do such great a bites, job. all kinds of. You know, they do a f- remarkable job here. Uh, especially on big race days. He really, you know, you talk about players who rise to the occasion in the big moments. They do. Joe Beja and his do. crew. No they doubt. Do. They, they, uh, they, they, get do. they do it on every day. I mean, uh, look, look at this. This is amazing. Of course. I mean, we're, we're at the track eating swordfish. Yeah. You, you never would have thought that. <laughs> I know. You were, you were thinking maybe I'll get a pretzel, you know, or something. Hot, hot for dog. a piece of that. Look at so whoever's on the fish uh, line. So Joe's here. having good fun with us. He just said, oh, really? It's sunny here in Jalisco, Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> I bet, Joe. Jalisco. I bet. Oh, man. He's rough. He goes, well, at least we got the fish tacos. So yeah. that's And something. they're nice. Exactly. We, yeah. we're, we're, uh, we're be careful there in Jalisco, uh, Joe. Uh, <laughs> there was a time I was calling a fight, and uh, they decided not to take the equipment to Jalisco for fear that they would not be able to bring it back into the country. <laughs> so we actually had to stop in Houston in some studio while they uh, you know, had another crew broadcast the fight. But uh, Really? Alisco, uh, not exactly. I mean, uh, at that time, it wasn't the safest of tourists. No, places he's, to go. he's fine. Yeah. And it's called the Hacienda at Patron. Hacienda. And yeah. rain or shine. I would imagine have, you're safe there. Yes. The, yeah, he'll be fine. Uh, the breakfast, that, I mean, that's probably guarded. Uh, rain or shine, breakfast tomorrow right here. Okay, Ocean good. Bay. And again, it is, I believe, the last one of the season. So uh, come on out if you got kids and looking for something. We're to starting do. to get encroached upon. Um, yeah, it's yeah a, no, it's a, it's it's a, a busy day. day. People they, don't care about the rain. Putting, I love it. Putting people out. Yeah, hey, this is good for it. That's Ten what we're palms here for. on uh, rain or shine is a great place to yeah, come. That's great. But particularly on the rainy days, if you can't walk around the track and the paddock and, and see the horses, yeah. you get a beautiful view a great indoors. View. And you can walk protected. out the doors and go outside, yeah. and come in, you know, go, go out. The, yeah, you can the see the paddock without paddock. getting wet. Yeah. Yep. So you could eye the Do horse what flesh. Does, you know. 
Uh, Study of the horses. Last throwaway clue, which really doesn't add anything to it. You should know it by now, but another location of this you know restaurant place, no. is soon. I know the name. It's going to be I opening. I don't know if that's the name of the place. Again, there's the original one uh, opened almost three years ago in Western Delray Beach, just west of the Turnpike, near our friends at Burton Max's. Nice. And uh, again, another one is about to open any day in Naples, and they have another one on the drawing board for Tampa. So there's going to be three of these concepts uh coming to florida soon but why doesn't right anyone come to davy <laughs> <laughs> mission barbecue did no um <laughs> Culver's, maybe texas roadhouse Culver's Culver's roadhouse is trying let's, let's, let's get a texas roadhouse let's let's build a texas roadhouse right in your backyard tony and then i'll be, be fine there every i'd be there all the time <laughs> you and it Garcia. after last friday <laughs> what a deal i would never leave <laughs> i love that did i mention how fantastic. much i love that burger for 13.99 i was fantastic. singing its praises on the let's eat group as one of the best burgers in town forget the price point and when you throw in the value proposition yeah, yeah it's, i mean kudos to ed garcia yeah they do a great job uh and really uh, that was a great time last friday we did a double header and uh, did a double header on uh, Wednesday, my first day back from New York. And uh, now I am afraid to get on any scale. The scales start <laughs> groaning and screaming as soon as I approach. I did some blood work this morning, okay. uh, which is going to be a little bit of a moment of reckoning in advance of the cardiologist visit <laughs> next Thursday. Did they this have could a, all come did crashing to an end. man there when uh, you did the blood work? <laughs> <laughs> they had. Well, oh, here's, yeah. here's a weird have thing. have somebody like working on uh, your eye? I, I went to one of these labs, you know, because it is it, Quest Lab. Quest. Course, right? Quest Labs, yeah. You go in now. It used to be like you never t see a human being. Like, I didn't have an appointment. It was just a walk. And I touched a screen. They said, you're on the wait list. It, you know, I got there at 630 in the morning because I didn't want to wait all day. I know it gets backed up. Yeah. You know, I got in and out within a half hour. But the most impressive part, you know, I have my little script. But I just go in. She calls me into the room. And it's everything is done in one room. The woman who is, like, working the needles with the blood. First, she asks for your insurance and your script. Then she goes to the computer. She tells you your copay will be $33. We accept MasterCard, American Express, or Visa. I said, I pay you? She goes, yeah. I said, wow, you draw blood and money. <laughs> wow. Oh, really? That's funny. Did you have to leave a tip? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Or was it an automatic 20%? I've never seen anything yeah, where it's gratuity. all in one. This one person is swiping the credit card one moment, and then she's plunging and the needle into needle. my eye. She's yeah, sucking out bad. the vial of blood. I was like, I don't know if that's multi-talented or I should be a little scared of the whole setup, but again, drawing blood and money, I haven't seen anybody do that that efficiently since my ex-wife. So that was <laughs> yeah. Ask anybody in divorce court. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, my! <laughs> Rod Nicoletti is wow. joining us. We're going to give uh, the boot to... Uh, yeah, I mean... To, uh, uh, I love being on, but Luby. if we're talking with one of the great um, uh, handicappers ever, and again, I'm useless. Send so. the winner of the tenth race tomorrow. To, uh, 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 you have any idea? What, uh, I mean, what the, was the restaurant again? It's the one that's not owned by BD or Cromartie or Buffett. Okay, it's and what type West of place Del is this? It has a whole range of. Uh, oh, whiskey. whiskeys okay. and a thousand different brown liquors, rise and things like that. Uh, I don't know. You never get All up right. to Delray Beach, do you? Uh, uh, Very um, Nicoletti. Very yeah, no, this is a place that opened three years ago. But if you're into whiskeys and high end bourbons and stuff like that, they have this bourbon. Uh, they have a wall that has a thousand different bottles of. I'm into liquor. it if you pay. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally into it. <laughs> well, I'm Mike Mayo. I don't pay anymore. I do it. Um, Ron Nicoletti, welcome back Thank to the lunchbox. He's got a couple of races off here on site, handicapper for decades at all three of the tracks, right? Four yeah. of them. Where have you worked? Everywhere. Where haven't you worked? Nowhere. In Florida, Tampa. Oh, okay. You but you worked at That's Hialeah. It? Oh yeah. No, you worked years. at Calder. Calder. Rest in peace, Calder Racetrack. Cold, no longer Gul exists. Uh, Gulfstream at Calder. Gulfstream Calder. Uh, the Hag beat Hylia at Gulfstream, we used to call it. Yeah. And uh, so we're coming into a big week. Can you discuss what's happening with the Florida Derby? What Do you yeah. know how is it looking like a full field or actually it's going to be a quality field, right? Yeah, we have and a quality field right now. There's yeah. seven or eight uh, entrants right now. Of course, the big one being Fierceness, the two-year-old champ with Todd Pletcher, going for his record seventh victory in the Florida Derby. And Johnny Velasquez will be riding, and he's going for his fifth victory in the mm -hmm. Florida Derby. So, And the horse worked unbelievable uh, yesterday. Okay. So, so really looking good. He's just one of the many. And you got, What's he working here or up in pa Palm, uh, uh, Palm, Meadows. Palm Meadows? Palm Meadows. Okay, Palm Meadows. right. That's the uh, training tracks they have up north. Oh, by the way, happy birthday 
to Luca Panici today. Luca oh, happy Panici. birthday, Luca. It's Luca's birthday. Yeah. He's written a couple of nice bombs in the well, last Well, and few he's weeks. been our one jockey guest on the program over right. the years we've been here. So yeah, uh, we want to wish him a happy good birthday. Good guy, good guy. Yeah, really he's got steady guy. 9%. You know, and he doesn't win a lot, but he can bring you home some long shots. Yeah, his ROI is he's good. He's been around, talking about me being around forever. He's been around, he's been around, around a long time. time right? yeah. And he cooks a mean pasta. The man is Italian. He knows how to cook. Yes, yes he does. Marco, too. Nice guy. So. Yeah. All good. Uh, that so, was a jock. That so besides jock. fierceness, we got uh, Shug's horse. Yeah, Conquest uh, Warrior. You know, Shug won the, the uh, Florida Derby 2013 with Orb. Right. That's and the last horse. time? Yeah, last it's time. Over the 10 only horse. That's his the only 16 one. horse, right? How old oh, is no, Shug? I was in the, yeah, in the yeah, Kentucky Derby. Yeah. 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 Claude Shug McGahee, of course, yeah. Kentucky hard boot. And he's, you know, won the Kentucky Derby with Orb, won the Florida Derby with Orb, right? Did he win the Florida Derby? Yeah, or that's what I'm saying, the Florida Derby. Yeah. And... So how, how old is Shug now? Is he uh, in his late 70s? Didn't it seem like Shug was an old timer like 30 years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he, one of those he looks guys. better now than he's he did. He's one of those guys. Yeah. What I'm was old. the movie Benjamin Button? He was born yeah. old, oh, and he's born like, old. Yeah. Yeah. he looks better remember. today. I always remember Benjamin I, I was I, I was had the blessing to always look a little younger than I am. And I remember when my I was my son's hockey coach. I was like twenty year old twenty years older than the other fathers, and they would come over to the kids and say, But these old guys, these old guys, you know, you're as young as you feel. That's yep. the other <laughs> thing is. So. Third uh, wheel, or I guess, of the big three. What about the Hades? Race is uh, Hades, Hades, right? Hades. Oh, Hades worked. Huh. Beat the rain this morning. Marco. Actually worked over this track yeah. undefeated. So we'll see how uh, that horse does. That's Joe Arsino, right? Joe Arsino. And we like Joe the... because he trains horses for our friend Joey Esposito over at the great Cafe Seville. Cafe that may not be something that he wants on his resume right now. <laughs> no, no, no. But they've been friends forever. Yeah. <laughs> friends forever. Uh, good, good food there. Yeah, oh, it's one of my uh, perennials. I, I, I think I told you on the show one time when I when I went and unbeknownst to me that it was his place. Yeah, right. yes. Some people took me there. Lawyers that never knew anything about racing, just some people that wanted to take us to dinner. And uh, I walk in, and and the people don't know anything, and everybody starts hugging me, you know, because they got this. Hey, run, the the waiters. <laughs> who do you like in the third? Who do you like? And, and people are like. <laughs> Yeah, you everybody know, like dumb in found, there. They were dumbfounded. It's a stone they, cold degenerate horse racing. Well, you know, junkie. they got that little room in the back. The room they, in the back was yeah. always a classic. Yeah. 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 Come a couple of the waiters there, Keach, yeah. and, uh, and there'd be two cops their, back their, there. Their, yeah. Yeah. Come on with this five. Come on with this five. But uh, yeah, it's nice to get ready. It's like when Tony Segreto goes into Delaware Chicken and Seafood. People there just start genuflecting <laughs> and throwing the turkey legs and the sausages and saying, here, take this, Tony. Take this. Yeah. Uh, but. That's all good. Do you have any thoughts yet on the Derby? You got to wait to see the conditions and how I got to wait to see where everybody's going. You're getting back to Shug's horse. What I like, one of the angles I like, and if you you, you know the last win was up in it was at you know seventy five thousand an hour, but it was at the nine furlongs. Okay. So you know you got to see which horses you think can get the distance. And I don't think there'd be much of a concern this year with a if you get eleven twelve runners. Tough to win from a mile and eight on those outside posts, but it doesn't look like that's going to be much of concern. Look like if I had to guess, eight or nine horses. Yeah, I don't think Gornock's going to make it. So, how's the undercard look? And and I guess if you were like a morning lines odds maker, what would you set the odds are on Defo having any money after the seventh race if it's like a fourteen race oh, that's, card? That's one to nine. That's that's a simple one. You, know, you wanted to give me something hard. <laughs> He's fielding <laughs> full calls from the Otani right now. Yeah, Probably going to have is. to lay down he a bit on the, yeah. the upcoming well, uh, uh, I've second been having, race. I've been having a ball with the uh, sports betting. You know, I know, wish we had it here, but the sports betting has been fun. You know, have you gotten into the tournament? Do you have any like uh, uh, predictions Flo I'm going or with hopes? Florida? You know, I bet he, Florida to win. Uh, you know, back when it was eighty-seven to one, I had a friend wow. put a couple of bucks. Really? Yeah, to last win the whole year, thing? I, last year I made. I think I don't know how much I made with Miami. I just kept winning with Miami, putting it into the next one, into the next one. Then I pulled out. The, I didn't know what I was doing. Because I bet I pulled out the money, most of it, and bet five hundred on them, and still ended up winning like fourteen hundred dollars or something like that, Sweet. which is amazing. Sounds like Tony, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was riding Miami right in the final four. Tony. You, who, who knew that Florida, was going to happen? And yeah. FAU is in a dogfight right now. I hope you have the under. It was twenty to nineteen at halftime. <laughs> the brainiacs of Northwestern I, versus I, I, the no, Owls. Louis, what are is you, it now? Are you a big college? Basketball fan? Me? No, I don't watch the stuff. I just I, I will you, watch yeah. the tournament. I, I enjoy it. I'm yeah. really a big do. time fan. Yeah. You no, know, big time fan. Yeah. You know me. I always find something to grouse about, and I hate the one and ones and all that stuff. It's like <laughs> it's just to me. Do they still have that where you have to make the first one oh, yeah, in order yeah. to go the second one? It's like. 
Right. Well, I like that. Guy, it puts a little pressure on the shooter. Yeah. Even if you're a great free throw shooter, yeah, you still got to make that. It's one. rewarding the team that's basically breaking the rules that is fouling. And then it's using it strategically like the guys just give him the two free throws and take away the incentive to foul because then it makes the last two minutes of the game. He sounds like one of the old ladies down in the pack. Yeah, yeah. I like the green one. Yeah, yeah. Get off yeah. my lawn. What is he talking I, about? The one I like the one that just took a dump. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's tongue. kids throwing a ball in a basket. You're overthinking it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. No, I, I don't know. But last night was fun. Did you watch any of those? That, no, that, I didn't. I watched I the watched. Panthers play. Miserably, I'm a big hockey fan. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, are they uh, brutal? Revving up to their worst hockey of the year. Yeah, right they the made three losses in a row. And they uh, like, they didn't have Markov last night or Ekblad, but they just looked yeah. like they were skating in sand. You know, so do you handicap those sports too? Yeah, I know, just hockey, just hockey. <laughs> He's look. a hockey fan, yeah. and uh, I really hope that you know. Look, if they're gonna get into a little bit of a slump, get it out of the way now, and. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe hopefully all of a sudden you're a Panther mojo. fan. You hated them like two years. I don't know. Well, you were rooting for them to get swept in the opening round by Washington. Just because Doug Sifu and I have a personal beef, um, and I guess he's still involved with the team. But that eh, whatever. I like the team. I like the composition of the players. How could you not like Kachuk? I mean, the yeah. guy is like hockey personified in terms of the toughness, the grit. Are, are you betting hockey? Yeah. Oh, every okay. day. Cool. Every you do? Day. Yeah. Wow. Do you give goals or do you just uh, play yeah, money, line? Just go, uh, money line? I try and make money line and then you try Punch and do in, in, you know, in, in game bet. You know, try and go. My son hit one for like, he had eight different things and hit it for like $1,400 oh, one nice. time. You he know? did an eight pay parlay and hockey. That hockey. is not even Otani would be sick enough to try <laughs> to do that. Oh, well, am I, Sonny would be. I don't mean to cast any aspersions or accusations. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. I didn't realize when it first came out, this is how dumb I was. It wasn't horse racing. So I'm going, oh, they, I, this is going to kill kill me, you know, $50 a, a game. You could bet eight bucks. Yeah, you right. could bet nine bucks. You could bet ten. Of course, you're nothing. You it's know what like I mean? Betting Basically, betting super effect is Ronnie. Right. You could, you know, bet these parlays yeah, and you just lay down five bucks. Well, suck, suck a better, suck a better the yeah. country. Right, but I, uh, you yeah. know, it, we can't. Yeah, but I bet on those bet. things. I bet at uh, ones I bet it's like four or five. I go deep eight bucks. And you, they pay six eighteen. I never hit one. Yeah, but yeah. at least I'm I'm in it and I can watch. You know, if I pick a go, a guy to score a goal, he doesn't. So right. if I go the other way, that's it. My son's friend just recently he bets these twenty team parlays right for like. 10 bucks right. hits one uh, picks up 50 grand wow right? 50 grand for the parlay and then he puts it into bitcoin and it's now worth three hundred thousand dollars. I would just quit. This guy bet ten dollars. I, I, it's one of my friends. Uh, oh my, my son's god! Good friends. Yeah. It's great story. Yeah. That's I a, don't understand bitcoin. That's like the best. <laughs> that's the best story I've heard since the guy named Chris Moneymaker actually won a satellite oh, Moneymaker, tournament. Yeah. Forty-five dollar online satellite tournament back in two thousand and two, and then he parlayed that into actually winning the world series of poker and i think he won like two million or three million dollars that year and uh, obviously the money maker effect he he basically made poker uh he, he sparked the poker boom so that was well, uh, we need to create a new commercial for the 10 palms yeah this is tony segreto's plate ladies right. and gentlemen you think the food's good here yeah. <laughs> i'm not gonna make tony lick the plate because he is an award-winning and classy broadcaster this is a dignified character not the kind of guy that's going to slobber down food on the air and he finished that thing right? i'm the one who'll do it yeah. hey let's talk a little food i know that you know you do you ever get a chance to come up here because you're always working during the race uh, you know I've, I've had i've had in the past you know always you try and come up here and i know at the end of the day you could always find ronnie at christine lee's and uh you have your drink and a couple of he's got bites. his own chair yeah, and he's runway eighty four. Uh, run, yeah, I've been a runway car. I, I'm not a big fan of change. The food is still good, but I'm not. I, I like the old runway. You like you know? the old one? Yeah, yeah. you know, and the maitre I, d'. I think they've done it up beautifully. Yeah, no, it's beautifully done. The yeah. pay maitre d passed away too, so you know, yeah, that, that Vincenzo. Was, like, Vinny, um, so that was like I, I called hey, Vinny. I need a table. No matter what's happening, <laughs> I got a table. You know, I stiffed him one time, but hey, I was thank able God to make he good. got him to twenty before he checked no, out. No, I got him sixty. Oh, it, it, it was one time where he got me in on a Saturday. It was be right before. They close for the renovations. I didn't have any cash in my pocket. I, like, I got uh, no cash. I'll get you next time. <laughs> I came to runway eighty four and I have no cash. cash. I did yeah. make good. Before, well, we went. Uh, We've been went to the Super Bowl for twenty years. There. Yeah. Yeah. We're oh. at this like, yeah, for twenty years. My we go with my family and everything, and uh, it's always been you know one of the things that we do. And with Vinny was the greatest because when he cheered for his team, used every curse word in the world that you can use, and it was just fun. The major D cursing like it, a sailor. You know, and he used them as vowels. Now. <laughs> Pronouns, <laughs> pronouns, yep, everything. And so it was a good, good memories and the food there is, you know, I got, you know, the, we talked. My favorite there is just the cauliflower macaroni. Yeah, that's and I go great. home. 
and I like uh, the, the chicken scarpiello, the chicken one like the chicken good. on the bone yeah. and uh, with the you know. With the, yeah. Well, that's Chicken Shoemaker. Yeah, Shoemaker. You know the story. Willie that, Shoemaker. Sure you know. As well, a Bill Shoemaker? No. no, what is this? The story of that is the old-time shoemakers, when they were working, they'd have a little pot in the back of their, their uh, shoemaker stores. This is back in Italy and even here. And they'd make chicken scopriella with the bones and put in the stuff. And that's why the bones are in it. And that's why they call it Chicken Shoemaker. There you go. You got Ron Nicoletti, expert horse handicapper, the, the, Italian food historian. Kids should have a food show. The, the Brigatoni with the, with the, the cauliflower, cauliflower is, is spectacular. Is and you talk about swordfish. We got some good stuff here, but the swordfish there, there at oh. Anthony's Runway 84. That's the my other favorite. Yeah. yeah, it's good stuff. That's hey, we I gotta get. take care, of, take care of some business, and I know you gotta go back right. to give out some winners. What, what, what you, got? you got any hot ones uh, today, Ronnie? I not know everybody this, asked you that. Not with this rain. Yeah, no, my long shot yesterday just got beat at the wire at ten to one. I'm oh. Still mad at it. I Always thought I was gonna that. win that one. But Do people give me much grief uh, as you're walking around the track. Uh, yeah, I used to. For very briefly, one season, I did the in-house handicapping at Hialeah. And, um, you know, people would come up to you and uh, just say, do you ever pick a winner? No, yeah. I, I, I told you the first time I did it, I called it real quick before you take a break. I did it, I called it. It's, uh, I'm doing the thing. This old man comes over and he goes like this. He says, you know, you should be on the news. I said, oh, wow, yeah. He says, as a statistic, your, your statistic, your bum, they should kill you. <laughs> so you're only, you're only as good as your, you're only as good as your last pick. I never forgot that. Oh, my God. People that are is, throwing vegetables that's at some you. brutal crazy, stuff right yeah. there. All right, Ron, we'll let you get back to work. It's going to be a big Nicoletti week out here. Go. You can follow Ron's picks uh, on the uh, simulcast. Uh, hey, I got a winner for you. Yeah, no, he's great. <laughs> you just go onto any of the racing apps and download the first, uh, is it the uh, first bet? Or or uh, the uh, in-house one that yeah. the, you'll you'll see Ron every day giving out winners uh, and uh, sharing his knowledge of the horses here at Gulfstream Park. All right, uh, we'll come back. Uh, we got a lot of business to take care of. Actually, let me give a good word for the people at Batch New Southern Kitchen and Tap. Weekend is coming up, and when I think weekend brunch, I think batch. That place is really happening and hopping in. You got to get Sagrino out there. Oh, yeah, we'll get them in. You got to try those drop biscuits with the beautiful Ooh. jams. Ooh. They, uh, and a little uh, butter, honey butter Ooh. is beautiful. They've got chicken and waffles. They've got shrimp and grits. They've got eggs Benedict with spicy shrimp that do over fried green tomatoes instead of over English muffins. All these southern twists, scratch made kitchen, great bar. with They have their own house-infused cocktails. Uh, they have a pecan-infused whiskey that they use for a couple of those drinks. Infused. Beautiful Infused. stuff. Infused. Free parking. That's the best thing. 525 North Federal Highway. And don't be deterred because they have a parking garage right next door where you can get four hours free parking, slide in and out, very easy, open seven days, lunch, dinner, brunch on the weekends with the bottomless uh, drink opportunities for $25, 90 minutes. You can get a nice little uh, weekend uh, party mode on there and uh, live music there. <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 6 p.m. They got happy hour every day. Great deals. Tell them the lunchbox sent you. Batch, New Southern Kitchen and Tap in Fort Lauderdale. Really is a remarkable place. Uh, are you a chicken waffles guy, uh, Nico? And I, I had it one time. I wasn't big, but I, you know what? I was walking through Publix yesterday, yeah. and they have them now. Oh, yeah? yeah. In even, the box there. Even so the Publix has Even it. Publix has it okay, now. Yeah. You know, I just like a good fried chicken. And to me, you know, you can bring the waffles home, have it for breakfast the next day. Just have the fried chicken. It's so good. It's good. Oh, they do a great job yeah. there. That, that's Batch. All right, we're coming back with more. Right? You haven't made any bets yet, Mayo? What's up with you? No, I'm very much restrained. Very I'm saving sedate. for the poker table. Segreno's poker sitting tournament here, tournament. Uh, yes. sitting chilly. Uh, FAU is down by five to Northwestern, and we're coming back with more from 10 Palms in a moment. Thanks, Ronnie. For Gilbert's 17th Street Grill, you know me. I love family-run places with quality food at fair prices served with passion and pride, and that's why I love Gilbert's. For more than a decade, Lenore, Beth, and Richie Gilbert have been serving up the best burgers, wings, ribs, salads, and desserts. It's a fast, casual spot. Everything prepared fresh to order from an immaculate open kitchen. They're at 1821 Cordova Road in Fort Lauderdale in the Cordova shops just south of 17th Street. Open every day but Sunday. One of my favorite burgers in South Florida. Big, round, juicy pucks of 100% Angus beef, char grilled to perfection. And don't miss the sweet potato fries on the side. They're legendary. Go to Gilbert's, feast, and be happy. Tell them the lunchbox sent you. 
when I'm looking for some wicked good food for a wicked good lunch, there's only one place to go. That's Wicked Cheesesteaks in Fort Lauderdale. It's at 4824 North Federal Highway, just south of Commercial Boulevard and across from Holy Cross Hospital. My friend Brian there, he will hook you up with some really tasty treats. They've got cheesesteaks just like the best you can find in Philly, along with lobster rolls, because that's where he's from, Maine originally. And they have wings and pizza and everything you want to have a really good time. Wicked Cheesesteaks, they're open every day but Tuesday. Check them out online, wickedcheesesteaks.com. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. If you're looking for a great place for steaks, seafood, and more, go to Tropical Acres Steakhouse and Butcher Shop. It's at 2500 Griffin Road in Dania, just west of I-95 in the airport. They've been there a long time, since 1949. That means they're doing something right. You'll get old-school hospitality from the Studiali family, along with great value for tremendous service. Of course, you could also go into the bar for happy hour every day, 4 to 6, and they have great value all night long. Also, a butcher shop that's open every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., except Sunday. The dining room is open every day at 4.30, except Sunday. Go to Tropical Acres. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. Great Italian food in a beautiful beachfront setting. Have I got the place for you. Casa Calabria. At the Ocean Manor Resort, 4040 Galt Ocean Drive in Fort Lauderdale. Highly rated across all the restaurant review platforms and totally Mike Mayo's Lunchbox approved. Delicious, authentic Southern Italian food in a cozy dining room overlooking the Atlantic. Live music in the lounge, full bar, and a great wine list. Owner Frank Talrico takes great pride in his family recipes from his native Calabria. Fresh fish and seafood, veal, house-made pastas, and marinara sauce is smooth as silk. You gotta try the imported meats and cheeses on the antipasto platters, and don't miss that ricotta gnocchi. Fluffy little pillows straight from heaven. Casa Calabria, open for dinner Tuesday through Sunday, closed on Mondays. Tell them the lunchbox sent you. Hey, it's Mike Mayo. When the Brooklyn boy in me wants a good bagel with Nova or some matzo ball soup, homemade knishes, or a great deli pastrami sandwich on rye, you know where I go? Grandpa's Cafe in Dania Beach. It's been around a long time, an institution, but a little over a year ago, a pair of New Yorkers came in, bought it, and refurbished the place. It's beautiful, and they are now serving great breakfast, brunch, lunch. They've got the omelets. They've got Eggs Benedict. They've got all kinds of great baked goods like Ruggleich. Grandpa's is just off Federal Highway on Southwest 1st Street in Dania Beach. It's open seven days. Go in there. Tell them that the Lunchbox sent you. We're back on the Lunchbox at 10 Palms. We've got a contest underway. If you know the answers, send it to MikeMayoEats at gmail.com. I think it's pretty easy once I gave all those names. Oh, yeah. Yes. Because the name of this restaurant is basically a name. Okay. And uh, I think you should be able to get the name based on clue number two. So uh, that's it. Uh, what before- was clue number two? <laughs> No, uh, Cromarty. You named remember? a bunch of people without their first name. One. No, that was clue number two. Oh, that was two? Yeah. What was number one? You don't want to go back over that again. It's just a Delray uh, Beach. How are people going to figure this out? Come on. Like, this is <laughs> yeah, a lot of Google. 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 West Delray <laughs> restaurant with a thousand. I just like messing with uh, you know, <laughs> urban. Yeah, don't even wall. worry about it. Hey, before we just get go. into more substantive discussions, I got to say a kind word about the people at Visit Lauderdale Food and Wine Festival. There you go. The International Whiskey Day dinner is sold out, so forget about that. But what you want to do is go to vlfoodwine.com, and then you can find one of two things. Either you can already get your tickets for next year's Grand Tasting at the discounted price, early bird rates, or they have another great event coming up in April. It's called Beyond Mimosas, Elevating Your Brunch Cocktails, uh, and it's going to be a great event taking place April 13th, I believe it's a Saturday, at noon at Primo Liquors, our friends, Koshal and Sam. Primo Liquors, Weston, 2390 Weston Road in Weston. That's a great place. $65 per person, strictly 21 plus. And uh, it's going to be a couple of great mixologists over there teaching you how to raise your brunch cocktail game. Uh, so it's not just mimosas, but you're going to have things like uh, I, an espresso I, martini, which is Shirley's favorite, yep. uh, some uh, make-your-own sangria, make a Kira Royale, which is a very classy drink. I don't know if you'd be uh, seeing Defo have any of those, but I know Kira Royale, what's that? What is it? A Kira Royale is a champagne cocktail where they pour this, uh, I believe it's a raspberry liqueur that is known as Kira. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I can live without it. Yeah. 
I would have to say, uh, yeah, forget you about it. You made it up. Try it. You uh, made it. Again, blfoodwine.com is the website. Go on there. You can buy uh, tickets to this great cocktail event, Beyond Mimosas, April 13th at noon. Primo Liquors. Great spot. Um, Primo Liquors. If you I, like I wine, live there. I live there. Yeah, Weston's not far from Davia. Yeah. Yeah. They have, I think, four or five locations now. The one, the original one on, on Southwest Ranches, 148th. That's also great. I mean, as well. I don't know how those guys do it because th- these tiny little locations, but they have shelves and ceilings that go from the floor all the way to the and ceiling. And they have this packed. They have everything. Yeah. Everything. And great deals. Great deals on wine. Uh, and also they do some great innovative classes and events. So uh, you want to get the tickets to this one, April 13th, yalefoodwine.com. Um so I want to just mention one thing. I guess uh, the news finally broke. I would heard about it weeks ago, but, you know, my friend Giovanni, this, the, 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 who was going back to where he kind of made a really great name and reputation at Valentino Restaurant, uh, Mike Linder was basically reopened the place, hired Giovanni back to run it as chef. Well, they kind of had a, a breakup. Um kind of only less than two months into the new venture. Uh, and you know what? It's one of those things where it's really sad and um, makes me sad on both sides that it didn't work out. But there's a very talented chef there that was working with Geo named Jake Abbott. And basically, they're going to be going on with the concept. Uh, they're going to rename it in the next couple of weeks. So it's no longer going to be known as Valentino. But Mike Linder and his crew and Jake Abbott are going to basically going for a Michelin star type experience. Where oh, it's wow. a tasting menu. Some very fruit, fruit different things like a, a seared duck breast, uh, it, you know, very composed plates. Giovanni was the pasta king. He like made these incredible pastas. Now, you know, I've gotten all sides of the stories. I've talked to everybody. Uh, the Sun Sentinel finally kind of wrote it and broke it publicly yesterday. Um, and Mike Linder took the high road publicly. Uh, didn't want to badmouth Giovanni at all. Giovanni. He, he was frustrated because certain things happened. I'm not going to get into all of it. I'm just going to say that I'm saddened that it didn't work out and that I wish Jake Abbott all the best because he is a really talented young chef. He seems to have really good energy and leadership nice. quiet qualities. Quiet type. And Giovanni might come on the show on Monday. Uh, oh, that's cool. We'll, we'll see. If, nice. uh, he's up in New story. York now like I was, and he loves to just hang out in uh, high-end Michelin okay. star kitchens just to kind of soak up knowledge and kind of network and he's figuring out what he's going to be doing next but uh giovanni might come on the show if i could get a computer uh, get him to figure out a computer but uh again we'll have more of that next week and maybe i'll give some more details uh, i do need to talk to mike linder again because uh i had a conversation with him that you know i'm not in journalism anymore so yeah. there's no on and off the record and people tell me things sometimes in confidence you know how that works Tony. oh, oh very well yes yeah, so i'm still uh, holding my 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 sources i'm the only one who knows them. Really? Yeah, yeah. For you. yeah that's what a good journalist does and you know i'm sure you have all kinds of conversations with people in power at university of miami about what's going on and uh sometimes you'll maybe a little drop a little morsel here or there but, <laughs> um anyway uh you know what it's time let's take another break because we got to do yes, a sir. lot of business in yes, a little short amount short of time, time. and we got to let defo get do you got any big fours going at Acolyte? Uh, I have nothing fives? going so far. Okay. I'm just watching. Uh, very enjoyable. FAU sucks, by the way. I'm Always really being frustrated. on here. FAU's down seven. Uh, Luby's like, already you throwing know, the if, towel. If you're doing a lot ago. of business, good yeah. for you. It is. We, it, yeah. It's people. Um, it's great. The the lunchbox, I guess uh, one cool. thing I, I wanted to talk about before we go to the next break is yeah. I'm playing some poker tonight with the boys. We're going to go out to the Hard Rock. They have a good tournament. But guess where we're going to meet and convene for a couple of pregame uh, Coney Island cocktails. Joe's. No, it would be <laughs> Tropical Acres. Oh, oh that's nice, nice. For that's their smart. happy hour that also is included on a Friday, yep. Monday through Friday, yep, 4 30 yep, yep. to 6 30 in the bar. Half price drinks on everything in the place, including those Belvedere martinis that I like so much. I know, Luby, I said yesterday that I was going to be dry. Well, I don't understand the dry thing. Dry moderation. Dry moderation. One little beautiful yeah, drink Belvedere there, martini fine. before a poker tournament sounds just about right. Maybe with one of those coconut shrimps or the sliders. I like the, the sliders. So it's sliders. It's the rare slider where they cook it to order. Great stuff. Happy hour there. And, of course, then you can go right into the dining room if you uh, want to have the full experience. Prime rib, filet mignon, some great seafood, 
call them up for the uh, Easter Sunday. Usually they're just open Monday through Saturday and closed on Sundays, but they will be open for Easter Sunday. Get your reservation now, 954-989-2500, Griffin Road. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you 75 years of tropical acres. Go experience it for yourself. Exactly. You'll love it. FAU down nine. Oh my God. Nine with sucks. about eight minutes to go. All right, they we're coming back with more. We got about eight minutes to go here on Mike Mayo's Lunchbox, <laughs> which returns in a moment. Food from a scratch kitchen, delicious drinks and house-made spirits from a craft bar. A great vibe inside and out with a spacious patio. I'm talking about Batch New Southern Kitchen and Tap, Fort Lauderdale, in the heart of the city at 525 North Federal Highway. It's open seven days for lunch, dinner, and weekend brunch with classics like fried chicken and waffles and shrimp and grits and creative items like pecan-crusted salmon and a fried green tomato BLT. And the drinks? Smooth, sipping, and so good. There's convenient free parking and a garage next door, happy hour at the bar, an entire patio, 4 to 7, Monday to Friday, and live music every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's pet and people friendly and with cozy fire pits for when the temperature dips. For reservations and more information, go to BatchSouthernKitchen.com. Hey, it's Mayo here for Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. Since 1951, for over 70 years, the home of freshness. I've been a customer for over three decades, and it's the place to go for poultry, steaks, meats, and, of course, their unbelievable selection of fish and seafood. They've got it all. Key West pink shrimp, grouper, snapper, lobster, and, of course, Florida stone crab claws of all sizes. Don't forget their famous fish dip and a full selection of prepared foods. It's located at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood, just across from the Seminole Classic Casino. Doug Carter and crew will take great care of you. Make sure to check out their weekly specials and daily catch online at DelawareChicken.com. Quality, value, freshness, that's the Delaware way. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. If you like seafood in a comfortable setting, outdoors, even keel fish shack at the corner of A1A and Commercial Boulevard in Lauderdale by the Sea, and also now with a new location on Las Olas Boulevard. Those are my spots. Upscale food in a down-home setting. The chef owners, Dave and Brad, do a terrific job with all the seafood classics that you want. They have the best grilled oysters in town, bang-bang shrimp, lobster rolls, and daily fish specials. They also have weekend brunch Saturday and Sunday. They have daily happy hour, 4 to 7. And they also have other weekly specials like mussels on Monday and oysters on Tuesday. Go to Even Keel Fish Shack and tell them that the Lunchbox sent to me and say, Mike, where should I go out to eat? I got guests coming from out of town. Where should we go? Cafe Seville. That's the answer. 2768 East Oakland Park Boulevard. It's a Fort Lauderdale perennial. Serving the finest in Spanish and continental cuisine in a cozy, friendly, comfortable setting. Joey Esposito and Sally, his better half, they've been running the place for a long time. It's been open since the 1980s. They got great Spanish classics like paella, shrimp with garlic sauce, and all kinds of great seafood dishes. The stuffed veal chop, oh, that's my favorite. Go to Cafe Seville. It's open every day but Sunday at 5 p.m. for dinner. Tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defoe sent you. Do you like burgers? Do you like wings? Do you like late-night food and sports on big screen TVs and cold beer and friendly vibe and great people? Then you want to check out Shenanigans, 1300 South Federal Highway in Dania Beach. You go to Shenanigans, you get yourself all the good stuff, the fresh fish every day, the black and grilled wings, and, of course, the kitchens are open late. Go there, tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defoe sent you. We're back on the Lunchbox. We're 10 Palms at Gulfstream. And, of course, we just heard from uh, the Shenanigans uh, spot. That would be a great place yeah, to go this weekend, this weekend oh, for wow. all your college hoops action. And, of course, come up here to Gulfstream and 10 Palms. You bet the races and watch some games. There's TVs all around us. Not looking good for the home team. It's about to be uh, midnight. Yeah, the defense sucks. For last year's Cinderella. To be really uh, honest, they can't play anything. No, you know, it's not over yet. It's not over. Until the fat lady What's sings. The, score? Yeah, yeah. the three point nine, shot changes they're everything. Nine. They're down nine with okay. about six minutes We're to go. Play 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 by play. Make that Those seven, left. my friends. You know, right. So what's funny is then look, and we were at a place last night that it would be a great venue 
to watch. Oh yeah, uh, your, your the guys. action. But my plan this weekend is something I've done for a long time: is to just be at home, be at and home. watch the games. Couch a great place yeah. to set up your weekend would be Delaware Chicken. Oh Farm look at that! Market. Feeds me right into the last live spot. But Delaware Chicken and Seafood is the place to get all you of the provisions that you wings, need for burgers, steaks, a sausage, the party. whole thing. I'm stopping on the, the fish, way home. The fish at Mimi's. Okay, oh, okay. Mimi's right. Nice You're gonna get some cannolis. No. I'm oh, not. you're so healthy. <laughs> my, How can you resist? Oh. My wife makes her own. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Really? Your wife oh. makes her own cannolis? Yeah. So what We've do you never get had these cannolis? You are get, you kidding me? You get some Does bread at Mimi's, chips? and then you go to Delaware, and you get some sausages, or you get some of that fresh chicken. And then you go fish. Home. It's Friday. And you get some fish. dips. Yeah. You're good. That fish dip, they You're used ready for the night. Yeah. Uh, they have also now a wings, salmon dip. You can make they have wings, soup. They have the turkey, turkey chili. A turkey chili is dynamite. And, and then the fresh chicken was on. I, it's yeah, still with me. Had you it. had the them. difference that I uh, noticed in between uh, or between uh, like like the normal chicken that you would buy in a grocery store really? and this fresh chicken from Delaware. You had them hack it up in eight pieces. Yeah, and yeah you they just, did it. Uh, uh, we did four of them. You know, we did half of the chicken and then ended up freezing the other half. But uh, nonetheless. Yeah, Unbelievable difference in taste. Like you said, yeah. it's just yeah, you really it's bursting it. with that freshness. It you really know, it's not yeah. using any kind yeah. of hormones, unnatural, uh, you know, uh, additives or antibiotics. It's just tastes so pure good. Chicken, yeah, fantastic. Look, our friend Joanne Goodness. will talk about the prices from time to time, but there's a there's reason two, by the their prices are where they are. <laughs> they are big on using real fresh. We've, ingredients. we've had this discussion before. I'd rather pay a little bit more for yeah. vastly improved quality than try to get a deal that is no deal and at all. Garbage. Absolutely. So, um, Absolutely. Delaware is at 4191 North State Road 7. It is the place to go to get your holiday provisions. We've got Easter, Good Friday coming up next yeah, week. Yeah, big weekend next week. Uh, we've got, yeah. uh, of course, Passover coming up next month. April 22nd is the first they Seder night. They have homemade night. The fish, and they also have... All kinds of good, like soup, matzo ball, chicken soup. How, how does Tony feel about gefilte fish? Do we know? <laughs> have you tried it? Have you ever eaten a have piece you of gefilte tried it? fish? You Tony, don't have to like Segreno. it. Devo hates it, but have you tried it? Because yes. I'm not a fan either. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're making it. a face, a mayo face. My shit's a Dominican wife loves it. She <laughs> actually fish. loves it. I, I, they I, make it fresh from fresh it. pike and oh, all no, this I'm other sure fish they get yeah. from the ocean up from up north. This uh, distributor that Jose was telling us about that he saw at the seafood trade show uh, a couple of weeks ago. And they're going to get in this fresh supply of pike oh, and the wow. other fish that they use. For the Make sure Tony's the out there when fish. they do this. You and yeah. him, I'm going to be um, issuing a challenge. Whoever meets Devo's already the Niger challenge, but I get I'm out. I'm out. I guess you might Segretto. love it. I'll eat it with Segretto. There's I'll no do chance. the challenge with Segretto. Yeah. And they have great, great <laughs> chopped liver there this. because a chicken farm, a place that gets such great <laughs> chicken products. Where are we going? Uh, we got to iron out the April date. I'm not quite sure yet, but we're going to be going out there. Sometime before I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Tony a yamaka and he's gonna have yeah, Tony can be <laughs> Defoe's <laughs> and some yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, I think I have my talus for my I'll, mitzvah. I'll bring it and bring I, with me. I, also, I love yeah. the story Gene told us last time about how one time they were trying to make the chopped liver with olive oil, trying to be more healthy. No. Ha, there's ah. an oxymoron healthy yeah. chopped <laughs> liver. Uh, you got to use the schmaltz, the chicken fat, and they do yeah. use yep, that yep. now. It's great, great. No, they do a great job. They're very diversified. We love Delaware Seafood. Go out there, they're open seven days. Tell them the lunchbox set you. All right, let's uh, wrap it up. Take one last break. And then we'll be done. Sorry for the, the end of the week. Totally fish, man. Got a bad staggering. Hey, Segreto eating uh, no, fish, a fish, though, is, is a hell of an image. I mean, yeah. if you think about it, uh, you know, I think I we have to, to see that. I think we <laughs> have to do <laughs> this. I, I really do. I'm gonna pay I will eat Adam with Tony. Tony. We'll see if you can eat with Tony. How about an appearance fee for Tony to come in and eat the the fish on the show? He can take all the sausage you want. We're back in a moment here. A little purple horseradish. For an exquisite sushi experience. Kaizen Sushi Bar and Grill in Fort Lauderdale is the place to go. 5640 North Federal Highway, just north of Commercial Boulevard. Chef owner Hui Lam, he's a sushi savant, slicing and serving pristine fish and seafood flown in directly from Japan and around the world. Nigiri, sashimi, special rolls, and omakase dinners. He's ruined me from going anywhere else. It's that good. Open seven days for dinner and also for lunch on weekends. Even if you're not a sushi fan, they have great cooked options, including steaks, chops, rice and noodles, and other Japanese dishes. It's fantastic. For reservations and information, go to kaizenflorida.com. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. Delicious Mexican food with innovative twists. Margaritas with a medley of tongue-tingling flavors. I'm talking about Taco Craft, Taqueria, and Tequila Bar. The place to go on Taco Tuesday and every day. 
It's located at 510 North Federal and Highway in Fort Lauderdale and also in Lauderdale by the Sea at Plantation Walk and soon in Coral Springs. Taco Craft has specials every day, including bottomless drinks for a Sunday brunch and Taco Tuesdays with their $4 premium tacos, including their new Berea tacos with bone marrow broth. Oh, it's so good. They've even made a taco lover out of me, and they've got so much more, including fajitas, that open face smashed cheeseburger tortilla that's new, and a guacamole sample that's an explosion of flavors. Kitchen is open late. There's delivery and takeout. For more information, go to tacocraft.com. Tell them Mike Mayo, the Lunchbox. Fish, a sophisticated setting. I'm talking about Corvina Seafood Grill. It's at 110 Plaza Real South in Boca Raton, just south of Palmetto Park Road. It's the place to go for the freshest and local seafood and fish, some of it with a Peruvian twist like their great ceviches. It's open seven days for dinner. They also have happy hours seven days a week. You don't want to miss it. It's a great place. CorvinaBocaRaton.com for more information and reservations. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. All right, that's going right, to do it for the week. The cut it to four. We'll see what happens. Oh, we'll yeah, the everybody. owls are hanging in there. I guess uh, I, uh, I spoke too soon. I spoke them, too soon. Them, yeah. Not the first time. No, as soon that. as you condemned them, they started <laughs> rallying. That's it. Yeah. I gave them the mayo kiss of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I condemned them too so. As soon as I write somebody off. Kiss of life. I wish it was exactly. that way, Well, the opposite for my horses. Every and, time I think and, they're And they're going to rebound in the ball. So they're in good shape. All right. Well, we could do play by play for the last three minutes, but I think people are probably actually watching the game. You guys watch the game. Yeah, well, and, uh, Monday. Monday, we're home, maybe with Giovanni Rocco, maybe with Mike Linder. We'll see nice. what I could conjure up. Uh, see, see where you can get to in the bottom of that story. That, that's a good one. No, it's, uh, well, I know things. I know things, you but uh, know things. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> yeah. And our wishes to the princess as oh. the news finally comes out about Kate Middleton and yeah. they broke into the freaking tournament for this news. Well, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously sad, um, but we'll see. Hopefully, uh, science what will be able to. Is, yeah. uh, uh, again, She'll have the best we've seen it. living she proof on this care. show about the strides yeah, they've yeah, made in yeah, cancer yeah. treatment. Ron Nicoletti your uh, mother is mother finished. Yeah. He looks like a champ. And I saw Andy, our man Andy, last night. Looks like he's he ready to go good. 12 he rounds. He looks good. Yeah, Joey so, looks good. And I know Joey's from my love, mom's experience that uh, they are making great, great strides. It's a strides. different world, thank God. It's a different world uh, between the immunotherapy and some of the other things. Uh, the treatments have really gotten My super advanced. My way at gmail.com by 12 p.m. tomorrow for uh, the Thank contest. you. Contests, uh, home show Monday, Tuesday at Kaizen, Wednesday at Gilbert's, Thursday either Casa Calabria or maybe Bamboo the Beach tea, for the, the tournament, oh, nice, and then yeah. Friday right back here for Florida Derby Eve. It's going to be a jam-packed week next week. We had a great week this week. Until Monday, enjoy every sandwich.